Jupyter natively supports many common file formats, and if your format doesn't work with it now, someone probably has made, or will make, an extension or library for it. JSON, HDF5, 4D Casa Hypercubes, Golden Fertility Statues, you can play with all kinds of MacGuffins in Jupyter. Let's review some basic categories. Text, code consoles and terminals, some common formats, and Jupyter Notebooks. The text editor in Jupyter includes syntax highlighting and configurable indentation. Create a code console for your text by right-clicking, then selecting a kernel. Terminals in Jupyter provide full support for system shells on Mac Linux and PowerShell on Windows, including programs like Vim or Emacs. Hack away to your heart's content. Let's talk about common formats. All popular image formats are supported as standalone files and in notebooks. After opening them up, some super useful keyboard shortcuts are hyphen and equal sign to zoom in and out, open bracket and close bracket to rotate the image, and zero to reset. PDFs are viewed easily, as is HTML and LaTeX. Delimiter separated values with commas, semicolons, and tabs are loaded lightning fast. This big.csv file is 174 megabytes with 33 columns and 1 million rows. Pretty crazy, huh? The max size limit will depend on your browser and file content. JSON files can be edited as cell outputs or searchable tree views. Vega 2.x and Vega Lite 1.x files can be rendered as files or cell outputs. Ooh, Jupyter Notebooks. Just like spreadsheets or presentations, Jupyter Notebooks are a new way to work easily with data and code seamlessly together. Jupyter has two modes. When a notebook opens, you're in command mode. Command mode is designed for easily navigating and changing the framework of your notebook. That framework is composed of cells, which keep your data, thoughts, and code in little containers. Use the arrow keys to navigate quickly around the notebook by cell, indicated by this color here, changing which one is active. There are lots of easy to remember keyboard shortcuts for commanding the framework. Add a cell above with A, add a cell below with B. Copy a cell with C, paste with V, cut with X, delete by pressing D twice. If you want to undo, press Z, or redo with Shift Z. You can change the format of the cell to code with Y and to markdown with M. Now let's talk about edit mode. Press enter to edit the currently active cell. Because we pressed M, this cell is in a language called Markdown, a way to easily format text. For example, if you type a hashtag, then a space, then your text, it will turn this entire line into the heading format. Press Shift Enter to see the results. If you have two hashtags, it will format the text as heading two, which is slightly smaller. You can have this up to six times for heading six. Some other useful symbols to format your text are italics using one asterisk, bold using two asterisks, an unordered list by using a hyphen, an ordered list by using a number and then a period, a block quote using greater than, and a horizontal line using three hyphens. If you're in Markdown and you want to indicate something as code, you can frame them with back ticks. If you have a big code block, use three back ticks and you can type whatever you like in the middle. Create equations by framing with dollar signs. Typing in a URL will automatically convert it into a link. Or create a customized hyperlink by using the link text within brackets and then your link in parentheses. So that's a quick introduction to Markdown, a way to easily format text. Press Y to change the cell format to code. You can see our kernel here is Python 3, so that's the language we should be using. If you type in some code, like x equals 1 and print x, pressing Shift-Enter will run that cell. The code is sent to the kernel, 
and then the output is put right back under the cell. Notice a number appears here to the left. This is the execution order of your code in the kernel. If we change the code and run it again, see how the indicator has advanced to two. If we add a new cell, type in more code and run it, this indicator now says three. And notice how it shows the value of X from the other cell. Remember this whole notebook is running on that same kernel. If we add another cell and X equals 10, X will equal 10 in the whole notebook. Meaning if we went back up, executed this, it will show 10. Jupyter notebooks are designed to work this way. So you can jump around to different cells and execute different codes flexibly. If you ever feel like things are getting complicated and you want to start clean, you can restart the kernel. To do that in command mode, press zero twice. You've got other advanced options too. Here in the menu run, you can see some commands that will save you time, such as restarting the kernel and running all your cells or only running cells above or below a certain place in the notebook. So that's working in Jupyter. Text, code consoles and terminals, some common file formats, and wonderful, beautiful Jupyter notebooks. I recommend practicing your keyboard shortcuts. It won't take long for them to feel natural and they will vastly speed up your workflow.